Hi there, and welcome to my Stellaris Let's Play Advanced Strategy Tips and Tricks. This is episode 10. In this episode, I'm going to look at Galactic Community, Diplomatic Weight, Edict and Campaigns. I hope you enjoy the episode. Now we're back. We have five planets at the moment, our capital, which has four research labs, our first planet, which has just an alloy foundry and is a generator world. Our second planet, which is a mining world and it has a robot assembly plant. Our third world with a robot assembly plant, some agriculture districts. And our fourth world, at the moment it's just got one generator district on. And we're going to add another one to increase our available jobs so that when this population here grows, we'll have a job for them to work in. Directly next to us, we have an empire, the Glesbig. They are reasonably happy with us. Definitely far superior fleet. And another empire. They are not massively unhappy with us. We're preparing to be able to fend off some invasion from them because their fleet's quite a bit larger. And then we've just made contact with another species to the north of them, the United Fexklanger regime. They are even more powerful than us and they're quite upset with us. And we don't have enough diplomats to send a diplomat their way. But there are two civilizations between us and them. So it's not really an issue. They're not coming towards us anytime soon. They can't get here. I'm not worried about them. And now we've just met another alien. These are a Megacorp. Fantastic. Again, there's no match for us. Where are they? They are to the north. I have Union's map mode enabled. If I disable that, yes. So I can see now by using the Union's map mode that there's some sort of alliance going on here or something. I'm going to have a look. Ah, so they're in a federation. Okay, Marshall Alliance. Perhaps that's something we might want to join. But we can get to that in the future. They have a megacorp there. Are there any other mega corporations? Citizen Republic, Holy Tribunal, no, no other mega corporations. Okay. Right, so the galactic community has popped up. Now, in certain cases, you might not want to join, if, for instance, if you're trying to get the achievement in Iron Man mode, but overall, it's pretty essential to be a member of the galactic community. You want to be in it, you want to be leading it, you want to be organizing the laws you want. So we're going to say yes and we will join. We've got some unemployment here, we're going to manage that. We've got a world here with no pops, ah, fantastic. We're going to upgrade the planetary administration. And on this planet, our home world, we're going to build another, I think, energy district. Now looking at the disposition of our fleets, we should probably put, I mean, we could put a star base here. Actually, I think I'd rather have a star base just here to collect this trade value. And then I can also build it up as a defensive star base. So I'll grab that extra trade value. I mean, a, a, this would be quite a good choke point here at Padjuran, but I could always build another star base here for now. And this is still a good choke point into my into my core worlds. So as you can see here on Jurg Qualith, the world has decided to make itself a tech world. And now we need to change that because that's basically the computer being stupid. So we're going to make sure that it's a generator world, which is what we want. That's going to give us an extra 20% energy credits on these guys because it's a generator world and now for the building I'm going to build an alloy foundry here because actually with the lower habitability yes with the lower habitability I think building a robot assembly plant would be slightly better there for now we've also finished building this civilian industry so we can dial back our purchasing of trade goods because so we'll remove it completely and I'm just going to sell a little bit less of my minerals because of that but I'll sell a little bit more food 
and let's sort out this research. So, so we have available colonial bureaucracy that'll increase our admin cap by 10. At the moment, we are getting a 13% penalty to tech. So it's not massive, but it but it is there and it's a slight problem. We can could increase our star base capacity to by two. I'm going to take that one because I've actually built an extra star, started building an extra star base here, which is going to put me over my star base cap by one. So I need to fix that. Now I'm going to take the science here and we're going to check this archaeology out. Oh, fantastic. An artifact. Well, we can definitely sell that. At the moment as well, I'm going to increase the amount of alloys we are buying. So I'm going to be buying, I think, five alloys per month. And actually, I'll get six. Because we don't need all that excess energy. We already have a deal with the curators. So we can't, we can't take another one just yet. So we don't need lots of excess energy. And then I'm also going to queue up a robot assembly plant here on Jap Prime. So that'll start building once I've built my reassembled ship shelter. And then I'll be producing robots on four of my worlds that'll really bump up my population. Now I've got a choice between the Star Hold, that's a good technology, Destroyers. Destroyers is a reasonable technology, but not necessarily overly important. And then below that, mineral, mineral purification. Now, destroyers is good because we want to be getting to cruisers. Once we're getting to cruisers, we can start uh, filling some cruisers out with some fighters, which are a very good mid-game ship, and hopefully get some uh, artillery on there as well. On the other hand, mineral purification, well, we're doing reasonably well for minerals. Although it is cheap, although it's cheap, I'm actually going to take the destroyer technology for now. It's going to increase our fleet command by 10 and let us build destroyers and now the galactic community has been formed so let's look at the, some resolutions so there's lots of resolutions in the galactic community when you're playing against us the ai so just playing a single player it's probably preferable to wait for the ai to propose some bills because when they do you don't have to spend your influence now in this case we've got lots of influence to spare we're not going to be using some of that anytime soon uh, well we will be using some of it to once we filled out this discovery here but we're not using it just yet so looking through I am actually going to check our diplomatic weight so at the moment we are the weakest now we're going to do things about that we're going to start building up our fleet soon we're getting 20 minerals a month that means we can build a corvette roughly every six months which is good we are going to increase our pops. At the moment, we're getting quite a, we're getting almost as much pop power as this United Fex Klanger regime, and we're getting a reasonable on economy. And then I think we're ahead across the board on technology. It's 135 on technology, so we're ahead across the board. Fantastic. We're also going to be assigning some envoys in here, and we're going to pop the envoy in once we no longer need it. Because at the moment we do want to keep improving this relation here. Actually, we will sign a commercial pact because that, while costing us some influence, is going to make them like us more. That commercial pact is going to add extra trust, I believe. I'm not going to sign a research agreement though because I don't want to give away our fantastic research advantage. So at the moment we're slightly behind the other empires, but not by very much. And that will change soon. Now, the way these different different uh, diplomatic weights are calculated, the fleet power is based on your total uh, military power of your, your fleets, which is this number here, the military power, divided by some constant. I can't quite remember what it is. But in essence, around 100 fleet power is, is 3 military power. So 100 military power is 3 fleet power. And... And so we've got 400 military, that's around 10 fleet power. As we build our fleet up, that's going to go up massively. Population, so population is an interesting one. That is your the number of population you have multiplied by 2 and then also multiplied by your happiness percentage. So if your pops are at 100% happiness, that means you're going to be getting the number of pops you have times 2 will be your pops of diplomatic weight. 
but if you are at 50%, it's just going to be the number of pops you have. So for machine empires, for instance, that will almost always just be the number of pops they have. Now, there are no machine empires here to use as an example, so I can't show you. Economy, on the other hand, that takes your basic resources, so and that's, that's your base production, not your monthly gain, but the number produced and different resources have different weights that they are multiplied by so for instance energy minerals and food are each multiplied by one uh, the amount you produce and then consumer goods are multiplied by two alloys multiplied by four the first three rare resources so volatile moats exotic gases and rare crystals are all multiplied by 10 and then the the, the remaining four are multiplied by 20. That sum, that massive number, is then divided by some other big number, and that gives you your economic weight. So the economic weight of a nation is the total production. You could be having negative on your monthly produced across the board, but you'd still have a high economic weight if you had a large production base. doesn't matter how much you're consuming. And then finally, technology is the technologies you have uh, divided by some number, again. And so here with traditions, I'm going to grab the science division tradition first because actually I've explored most of the planet. So to boldly go is not going to be so useful now. I'm probably going to take fulfill this tree here up to the minus 20% upkeep because that's going to be quite important on our researchers because we've got quite a few of them. And then I'll increase the second side. So fantastic. Now we have the trade pact with this empire here. That should improve how much they like us over time. And now we are over our starbase cap, so that's increased the starbase upkeep by 25%. Now, starbase upkeep isn't just the large starbases you have, which are these, these starbases here. Now, that's also the starbases like these. So this has gone up by 25%, which is now uh, 105. We have a reduction of 20% from our expansion tradition. So that's not really a big deal. We're only 5% over base cost. Now looking at our physics research, we have the global energy management. That's quite good if you've got some energy worlds. And we've got two of those, but it does take up a whole building slot. So that that's only partially useful. The reactor booster, I wouldn't rate that as a great one. You don't really need it. Get increased engine technology or don't use things that require the energy. Increased colon development speed. That's pretty good. That's all right. And then curator exploration lab plus 30% survey speed, pretty bad. So I'm going to take the AI control colony ships. And now an empire wants to make a, a non-aggression pact with us. So how much is that going to cost us? If I just pause and take a look. So that's going to cost us 0.25 influence per month. We're at 5.25, 800 influence. I can afford that and that will mean my border is safe. So I'll confirm that non-aggression pact. And now I can reassign my envoy to the galactic community and that's going to increase my diplomatic weight by 10%. I'll be now the third most powerful empire by diplo weight, which is there's quite a big difference there. And as we go on, we'll hopefully get a plus 50, 60% added on to our uh, diplo weight. Fantastic, we finished this one and this is going to hopefully show us where another one is. Yes, Zeroni Minor Colony. Fantastic. Oh, nuts. It's quite a way off. We might have to wait a long time now to get to that one. Darn it. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, I could... Yes, I might... It's going to be massively expensive for energy, but I might build out there. I don't want this research agreement. Let's make sure our scientists are busy. Auto explore can be turned on there. This scientist here, I've already got somebody assisting research on my capital, I believe. So got this one. Do I have any more to do along here? Well, not ah, I've got an archaeology site up here, so I will send this guy off to there to excavate Wildmore. And so that I don't get any piracy, I'm going to build a couple of gun batteries here. And that's going to increase the, it's going to increase my trade protection along these two systems. Obnol already 
protects trade there. So I'm going to get full trade protection all the way back to my capital from Odnol. Because at the moment, I am starting to tick up some piracy. And at a max trade route value of four, that's that's not going to be an issue yet. But later on, as as the planet here, asked Jerk Falig advances, that will uh, be an issue. So defensive pack. I've got no aggressive neighbors. I don't want to be drawn into a hostile war. I'm going to decline the defensive pact. I mean, they are bordering at least this nation here, or they might be soon. So I don't want to be in the firing line. Not at all. So looking at the policies that are up, we have a plus 20% weight from fleet power. That's not great yet, but that could become great later. Who's proposed it? That's not somebody we are massively fans of yet. But actually, we will support that because we will build a fleet. And we'll look into building a fleet right now. So we have, we'll go to the fleet manager here. So in fleet manager, you can, this is basically where you're going to assemble your fleets and make sure that they are all of the right number of ships. Uh, so let's increase the number of corvettes we've got. Let's spend 900 alloys. We'll double our number of corvettes. And that will double our fleet power, hopefully. Let's upgrade there. And which building are we going to build after that? Ooh, nuministic visualizations. Yes, I think I wouldn't mind buying that. I can't quite remember what it does. They've got themselves a deal. I think it's an edict. Yes, it is. Plus, consumer goods minus 5%. Research speed statecraft plus 10%. Monthly energy credits plus 10 I'm going to wipe that off. Now, edicts here, we have a maximum cap of 2 because of our empire type. Down the bottom, these are all campaigns with this symbol. Now, something that's important to note is that campaigns, you can run as many of them as you want. And they tend, they tend to not cost influence, but sometimes they do, like the one we've just ran here. They will only run for a set number of times, so these will run for 12 years. On the other hand, our edicts, once you activate them, they will run in perpetuity. It'll cost you influence to deactivate them, but that's it. That's where I'm going to leave this episode for now. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. If you've got any feedback, please leave a comment. And if you'd like to see more episodes like this, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.